Hey, everybody. So I love baseball movies. Baseball movies are so much fun. I've always loved them. And it's been a while since I've been able to see like a really good one come into theaters. And so when I was searching through the list of movies that were coming out in the theaters this week and I saw a movie called Run the Bases, I got really excited. And then I looked a little bit at it at the poster and it's like, huh, there's a bunch of actors I don't know in this movie. There's a couple of directors I don't know in this movie. This could be really interesting. Like it seemed like a localized release. Sometimes Utah does that. And then I went to go see the movie and I sat down and I looked at the screen and the first thing that popped up was a logo for Up To You Productions. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is a Christian movie. Now there's not so much of a problem with the belief system. I'm a Christian myself. It's just that Christian movies, they have a couple of problems with them that are really hard for me to ignore. One of them is that they're just really, really heavy handed with you know the Christian message. It, to the point where like, I understand that the purpose is to talk about God in these movies, but it gets really heavy handed and I feel like it gets in the way of making you know, a good story. You see that out there? That is left field. When something comes out of left field and solves all of the characters' problems, we call that a deus ex machina. If you translate it from Greek to English, it means God in the machine. And that's part of the problem here is that like Christian movies kind of rely on that because that's the message they're pushing. And consequently, the story just kind of starts to fall flat. But speaking of the story, let's go ahead and summarize that for you. Let me tell you what that's all about. It stars this guy named Luke Brooks and Luke loves baseball and so did his brother, but they both had a heart condition that makes playing ball not a healthy thing to do. It could completely ruin them. It could even kill them. Uh, the movie begins with Luke's brother actually dying on the way to home plate because his heart condition just kind of kicked in and it failed them. So as a consequence, Luke Brooks has kind of made it like a tradition that before and after games and during practices and whenever, he will run around the bases and he will pray while doing so as kind of a way to remember uh, both God and his brother. And it all works out until he gets a new job at a new city and there's all of a sudden this ordinance that says that you're not allowed to pray or do any religious activity on public ground, such as the school. And so this Luke Brooks guy, he continues to run around the bases and he continues to pray until one day he just did it so many times that he actually got arrested and he got sent to jail. Now I'll go ahead and tell you about the ending in a little bit because I have a lot of things to say about the ending of this movie, but what I can tell you right now are some of my first impressions of this movie, and my goodness, this movie was long, and that was the one thing I kept coming back to, was just how long the movie was. The first 20 minutes, almost nothing happens in the movie in the first 20 minutes. Uh, they set up some things, but between the setup pieces are just long stretches of nothing happening. And it's not the only instance. Throughout the movie, they have several subplots that really just halt the main story to a standstill. And the part where he goes to jail, where Luke Brooks goes to jail over his belief, he meets a convict and they spend a good chunk of time. Uh, like we have a full Christian rock song in there and then we have a couple of minutes of dialogue at the beginning and the end of it. He, we just get like five or seven minutes of him converting this dude in the middle of jail. And we didn't need that. I understand that like they're trying to uh, make a story about you know religion and what it can do for a person, but frankly, it felt like they were getting distracted from their main story point. When you are telling your story in a movie, you kind of have to make sure you just tell your story in the movie. Whenever you go off on like one of these tangents, 
that that would be fine if it was a TV show and you had you know 16 episodes to talk about stuff. It would be fine if you were doing an ongoing comic book series where you know you can build things up slowly as the issues go on. And it would be fine if it was a video game where your character can delay the main story as long as they want it and they could go off and do side quests. But in a movie, you gotta have to stay a lot more focused than that. And that was part of the problem here. This movie was not very focused. It had its main story, but it kept leaving its main story so it could go talk about, you know, anything else. And then the ending. The ending is just extremely frustrating. Oh, ah, I hated it because it followed that deus ex machina trope that I told you about, like to a T. Uh, every character, except for the bad guy, but like the main character, Luke Brooks, the team, like everyone involved with the movie, they all basically get exactly what they want and they didn't have to work for it. They didn't have to make any hard choices. You see, when you're making a movie and you're making characters, you don't want your characters to be passive. And that's what this movie was. It was a bunch of passive characters. There's a point where he's in the jail cell, right? And he's just sitting in jail and his lawyer shows up and the lawyer says, hey, I am a very, very, very good lawyer and I know we can beat this and we can get the ordinance overturned and then you can get back to your family. And he's all like, no, God put me in this cell and he'll get me out of it. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. Like. You gotta, you gotta make a choice for yourself. He made no choices that impacted the ending of the movie. He just kind of sat there and let things happen to him. And that's not how you make a good movie. Now, you might be saying, well, the message of the movie is supposed to be how God just does things and how he's in charge. And that's fine, that's fine. But let me talk about Angels in the Outfield for a little bit. Angels in the Outfield is a fantastic baseball movie and I really love it. And uh, they even go as far as to talk about God in the movie. It's not necessarily a Christian movie, but they, it, it has Christian themes in it. And the difference with that is that all of the characters by the end of the movie, their lives were changed for the better, not in the way that they thought it would, but in the way it needed to. And it happened because they had to make active choices. They had to work to get over their obstacles. This movie just felt like I was watching a guy through, go through a bunch of obstacles by himself and it just ended. It, it, it just solved itself and that drove me nuts. I hated that. Was there a good part to this movie? Yeah, there was a good part to this movie. There was a lot of to this movie that I actually did like. A big chunk of it had to come from the acting. I believed all of the characters and all of the actors all the way through the movie. Every part of that movie was really well acted. There were some parts where like the, the teenagers, they were a little bit cringy, but I think they were playing it to be cringy on purpose. So yeah, frankly, if you're looking for a really safe movie to for you to watch or for your kids to watch that will ultimately, you know, give you some feel good feelings, it works. It works pretty well for that point. But I also have to say that there are some other movies playing in the theater. I recommend you check out some of those other ones instead of this. But I mean, just like sports, I guess not every movie can be a winner. But there's always the next game. Hey everybody, so thank you so much for joining me on this movie review that we did today. Uh, make sure you comment below your favorite baseball movie. And also be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any future installments of this movie review series that we're doing. Until next time, thank you for joining.